in order for us to get back up and get strong, we got to fall, right? And he fell about as hard as anybody could fall. At one point in time, I honestly thought I was going to lose him. So the way I feel is he had beaten death already. There was no question in my mind. He had beaten death already and he came back and he became a general all over again. The same way he was in graffiti, Mm. I feel like he got even bigger in hip hop. You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. We are off to the races. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, Central London, essential as you need to be. Choose to be, want to be, you don't want to be anywhere, trust me. This is the place. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Big shout out to Strain Station inside the place as well. And everybody has got the Television app. You know what it is. Free download for your sport and art, your street culture needs. We're going transatlantic. We're going across right now. Um, to a gentleman that without question has got more history than the books will ever give him credit for. This gentleman, for more somber reasons, we're connecting uh, the life and times of DJ K Slate, aka Desi Des, TFA, from the same crew, Protégé, someone that came up through the ranks alongside that gentleman, is with me right now. Dero, TFA, how are you, my brother? What's up, man? What's going on? How we feeling? How we doing? I'm good all considering, brother. How are you? Uh, hey, you know, obviously things could be better. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lost the, <laughs> I lost the, you know, I lost the big bro. You know what I mean? There's really no other way to put it. Not a happy time for me. Uh, as you well know, I also not too long ago lost another comrade. Absolutely. That I had almost as time, as much time as I had with K Slay with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be per one effects. Yeah. Rest, Rest in peace, in brother. Peace. Um, Al, I'm going to miss you. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, man, you know, things just seem to be going uh, slowly in the south uh, direction uh, right now when it comes to things like that. So, yeah, I would have to say uh, the, the the mode at this point is uh, a bit somber. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, I feel you. It's um, shit time right now. It really is a shit time. I, I, it's, it's hard to process um, the passing of, of K-Slay, particularly from a UK standpoint, because... We know him so fondly as as the Desi Des uh, in Star Wars, then then of course the transferal of skill sets going into DJing. Fantastic catalog of content and just pioneering behaviour, which often doesn't get the flowers it deserves. You know, it, or, or not until late, um, unfortunately. We're talking about a gentleman who put. Oh my God. I mean, he put masses of hip hop artists on before they blew up to that super status. No question about it. I mean, I I couldn't even begin to tell you, you know, the thing about Keith is that um, he lived a couple of different lives, Mm -hmm. right? He had his graffiti life. He had his personal life. He had his hip hop life. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't one that would... Uh, particularly mesh all those things together. You understand? So we didn't all even know about each other. You know what I mean? We knew of each other. You know what I mean? But I don't know every single hip hop uh, cat he's ever put on. I mean, some of it is common knowledge, but, you know, we spoke about what we spoke about and our life and our situation goes back to the 80s. You know what I mean? So obviously, (laughs) you know, there's a, a, a whole lot of history, a whole lot of laughs, a whole lot of things that we spoke about. And, um, you know, this this guy was I mean, he's a loss not only for the hip hop community, for me, 
he's just a he's just a loss to the whole damn world as far as I'm concerned, man. I mean, this was a dude that you know he 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 very rarely, if ever, said no to anything. You know, what I mean, he wasn't the guy that would push you away or not embrace you. He was the guy that would usually give you his time unless you came at him, you know, in a, in a bad way, obviously. Then then that could go in that other direction, you know, S- slap the shit out of your favorite <laughs> DJ. You know what I mean? But, you know, that that really wasn't who he was as a person. You know what I mean? You know, mm, yeah, that was if you take him there. You know what I mean? But, yeah, for sure. And you know, I, I clearly was on a whole nother page with him. You know, I, I, again, we knew each other since we're teenagers. He was a little older than I was. Um, mm. I met him through my cousin, uh, Al Jackson. Uh, right. Used okay. to write sites for a very short time. What did you write? We used to write graffiti together. He used to write sites, C-I-S-E. Just Ooh. a neighborhood guy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just a neighborhood guy. Nice Never, says. You know what I mean, uh-huh. we're not gonna we're not gonna make up things that aren't true, right? Mm-hmm. And he was very close to Keith. And somehow, some way, was able to get a black book in his possession from Des, from Keith, K. Slay. Mm-hmm. Something that he never did. Like, he would never give his books up. You know what I mean? But he liked my cousin so much, he gave him the book. I saw the book. That was it. It was like I opened up Pandora's box. I went, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh. you know what I mean? Like, Biblical scriptures. Out of the book. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know. If I told you the artist names that were in there, astounding. You know what I mean? Guys like wow. Art, Chain 2, Case 2, Butch 2, Scheme. You know, like th- these were like some of the, you know, the biggest, wow. heaviest guys at the time. You know what I mean? And Crazy. Des was a very personal person. So for him to even do that was, yeah. you know, I mean, it was amazing. So my cousin made the introduction to us. Um, and that was it, man. I I, I just wanted to be... In his presence every second, gaining as much knowledge as I can. Mm. Um, I was never a pushy type of individual. Uh, we got along. We talked about the same things. Mm. And he, you know what I mean? He took a liking to me. He embraced me, put me down with his crew. That that was TFA. Oh, uh, anybody that knows me knows I pushed that and have pushed that my entire career and mm. still do to this day. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, it, it, it's a lot. I'll be honest with you, yeah. 40 minutes ain't enough, man. Yeah. You, you do 400 minutes probably still wouldn't be enough. It's but, timeless as you know, well. we'll just, you know what I mean? You you take the best of it and, mm. you know. Well, I, you mentioned just before you came on that, you know, the struggle was real in terms of being a street artist, a graffiti writer of its time, and the the protocol. There was a, the, a code of conduct. And you couldn't <laughs> just be a graph writer. To be introduced into the world Alongside Casey, that must have just been such an eye-opening, jaw-dropping moment of reality. You know th- this. So okay, so here's this unknown um, Hispanic male, right, myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm 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 wide open, right? Uh, green by all terms at the time, right? I mm-hmm. had no street cred, no nothing, nobody, not, not, no connection at all. Mm-hmm. I have my cousin's connection to him and the fact that they both went to high school together. Right. So, right. you know, simply put, he took, it has, you know, I, I told you this before, but you know, we're going to put that out there now for the masses. Had he not taken a liking to me, things could have been went very different for me uh, as far as my graffiti um, situation is concerned. Right. I could have become very discouraged and said, I don't want to be bothered with none of yeah. that. You know, I, I, I'm i going to head in another direction. Right. So mm-hmm. understand this guy already when I met him was already on superstar status. He was he was uh, an Legendary. icon already as far yeah. as I was concerned. You know, what I mean, yeah. um, Star Wars actually, I believe, was already in the making. Um, wow. Just around that time. Um, he was already the king of the ones and threes. And. You know, as far as I'm concerned, man, he was, for, you know, for me and, and still is, he was larger than life, man. I mean, mm-hmm. that introduction pretty much changed my entire life. You know I mean, wow. there's really no other way to put it. You know, what I mean, you know, it it put me in a situation where just other people knowing that it was like, OK, so he's cool. 
You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You know, he runs with, you know, he runs with Dez. You know what I mean? Like I would go to the neighborhood even in East River looking for him. And the cats out on the street, which at the time were Money Mel, that he wrote Do To. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Tank was out there once in a while. I was like the muscle of the crew. Uh-huh. Uh, JT, who was a rapper, you know what I mean, in the neighborhood. But Money uh-huh. Mel, I would see all the time. He was always out there. You know, he was doing his thing. You know, uh-huh. he, was, he was on the hustle. He was on the grind. He'd be like, you know, I say, yo, did you see Keith? Nah, man. You know, I, I think he went to the other side of town. Or, yeah, yo, he should be upstairs. You know what I mean? So I was like, ah, cool. Let me run up there and see if I catch up with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy. Just crazy. Yeah, you're, you're sending my mind into these kind of, you know, man, you, third you just, party kind of. That's I mean, think world. about this, right? Crazy. So you remember, I, I met Dez prior to, you're, you're into beatbox, right? Yeah. So you remember the show, right? Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, no more delay. Just check out the new style I display. Yeah. Now you gotta be fresh. This is before that. That wasn't out yet. I met him before that. That was like I would say a year, maybe two prior. And when that came out, Doug Fresh was also, you know, very cool with my cousin. Yeah. He gave my cousin the tape before it hit the radios and, and everywhere else. <sighs> We were playing it in his little green uh, 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 Vega. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not today, terrible. dear. Don't do this to me today, I'm brother. You, was, <laughs> at, at that point in time, I can't lie to you. I don't think I had five cents in my pocket, but I was probably the happiest kid in the world. That's you know right. I, mean? I, I felt like if you tried to shoot me, the bullet would stop here and drop. <laughs> That's how I felt. It's a matrix shit. <laughs> I'm just making it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to stress it to you the yeah. best way that I can to try to make you understand what that felt like. Oh, wow. It's crazy. You know what I mean? It was surreal. Yeah. You know, I, I, and now check this out, right? So now we're talking about a time where this is the end of the silver trains with the blue stripe, right? Right. Okay. And now in comes the white elephants. So now all of the bigger artists were starting to stop. So now mm-hmm. I'm saying to myself, man, I'm never going to be able to make a name for myself if I can't paint on these trains, mm-hmm. right? Lo and behold, we thought they couldn't be painted. Well, what a mistake that was, right? We found out that they could. And that was it. You know what I mean? You know, Des went to some of his old spots, took me along with him. And I can't lie to you, my heart was coming out of my chest. I'm worried about falling through tracks, other crews trying to mess with us, cops trying to get us, Ooh. getting electrocuted, obviously, right? All of the all of, of the rigors that come with that. Yeah. And this guy's cool as ice. He did a top to bottom right off the train station. Like, yo, we could stand right up here and rock. I was so afraid I did a windows down next to his top to bottom. How hysterical is that? Well, oh, where does the strength in that come from as a graffiti writer? <laughs> like, the, I mean, okay, we're talking about Des here, right? But you're there. You're you're witnessing it. And he's, you know, he, he'd get a barbecue out if he felt like it. This sounds to me like a Pretty casual... Much, man, it, you know, to him, it was walking the park. You know, to me, I was, you know, I'm looking around. I'm like... You know, is this cool? Am I gonna be all right? You know, are we gonna are we gonna be okay here? And lo and behold, man, you know, I got home safe and sound. Everything was beautiful, no problems, no issues. The only issue was why didn't I do a top to bottom with him? You know what I mean? Well, I was scared to death. That's why. Famous last words. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. And you know, again, just going back to the the, the presence of 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 Des is that 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 just must have been so overwhelming and from every from that point onwards you would just you would continue your your journey and meet all these different characters that I, we only watch in Star Wars and and such right you know just understand right so okay so we know Case Lay as the DJ right you know mm. Des is the graffiti artist and it took years for most of the people in the um in the hip hop world to even realize. Yes, that's right. This was the same, but they didn't even know. Yeah. Because he was the type of individual, he didn't go around talking about all of these things. Mm. That, that's just not, that just wasn't the person that he was. You know what I mean? He didn't do that. You know what I mean? He was the type that, you know, unless you were real close to him and maybe you inquired about it, he wasn't going to, he he just, that's just not who he was. You know what I mean? Why is that though? D? Why, why, why was he so why did why did he build his life within many have many lives within his life? What was what's the th- what was the theory? Do you think on that? Well, understand something, right? So early in his life, 
you know, there, there was, you know, there were traumatic times, right? You know, he, you know, he got involved with the elements in the street, you know what I mean? You know, the mm-hmm. drugs and, you know, things of that nature, right? You know, I don't want to get too much into his business, but this is common okay, knowledge. He spoke about it before mm-hmm. and uh, it was starting to drag him backwards, right? So it was mm-hmm. a time, of course, the good times with me and with other artists of the culture at the time that he had good times with, um, those were good times for him, right? But mm-hmm. in the end, it it kind of it kind of went black, right? Mm-hmm. But if it wasn't for that, maybe he wouldn't have became what he wound up becoming. You understand? Mm-hmm. So in order for us to get back up and get strong, we got to fall, right? And he uh-huh. fell about as hard as anybody could fall. At one point in time, I honestly thought I was going to lose him. So the way I feel is he had beaten death already. Wow. There was no question in my mind. He had beaten death already and he came back and he became a general all over again. The same way he was in graffiti. Mm. I feel like he got even bigger in hip hop. He has so yeah. much love in hip hop. I, 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 I mean, I, I couldn't even name all the names. It's, it's just too many. You know, we we don't have enough video for that. Both of yeah. our computers would be down before. <laughs> The amount of rappers that I was introduced to because of his mixtapes and 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 more so, you know, the playlist mixes that he does now, you know, these are bona fide EPs and albums that he's putting out. He, you know, he put out on Spotify almost as recent as like the last few months, like insane, insane levels of levels of work rates kind of mirrors that it kind of mirrors the graffiti ethic, doesn't it? There's no question about it. I mean, you know, you have to understand, right? So Des was a king, right? There's graffiti artists who have done their thing. Um, You know, they were impactful, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think about the history of this thing that I've been involved with more than half of my life, um, three quarters of my life at this point, Mm -hmm. you know, you have to have a certain sort of drive and work ethic, right? You can't just... Uh, you know, dabble in it. It's just, it's yeah. just not going to work. That's not the type of individuals that we were, that I am, that he was. Mm-hmm. He was the type that if he was going to jump into something, he was going to jump into it head first. Mm-hmm. And that, that was that, right? So he took that same work ethic and he put that to hip hop. And as far as I'm concerned, where the DJ mixtape game was concerned, he shut it down. I mean, it, it, it went down. to a point that they shut down the mixtape awards because there was nobody who was going to beat them no more. So they were like, yeah, it doesn't even make no sense. With That's it. It's a wrap. You know that's, I mean? the, that's the illest quote. Like, if you're going to do it, do it to shut down. <laughs> I, I mean, that that was it. You know what I mean? You just was not. I mean, he had every, I mean, even to the to current day, like, you know how difficult it is to get somebody like Lil Wayne to come in and, and, you know, and do anything for you like that. You know, we're not talking about a guy that you could just, walk up on us, you know what I mean? Or call, yo, Wayne, you know, it doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? You have to have built the type of monumentous uh, uh, love in this game that they'll even be willing to pick that phone up. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. so many people that he has messed with, and this is how it happens in that game, you know, you, you put them on, you get them to a certain level, right? They blow up and now they don't take your phone calls no more. Like, you, yeah. you know, now they're too big for you, right? So true. What there's always said was, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. And what, you know, what comes up is eventually going to come down. So all those cats that you passed on the way up, when you mm-hmm. come back down, if you didn't treat them properly, you know how that's going to go. Hey, remember that shit hard. You don't, believe- you, don't, you, get, you don't get 110 MCs on one tune. Of that, that, that was, I, I couldn't even understand that shit. I'm like, bro, how did, how did you even pull this shit off? Like, how did you get I had a conversation for like 25 minutes just on that. Yeah. And it shit still didn't make no sense to me. I'm like, yo, Keith, I, I, don't, I don't, like the amount of running around that you, a, a person would have to do to make that happen. You, yeah. You're in the hip hop game. You know what, you know what it is. Yeah. Just do your own videos and such, right? <laughs> now you, you, you got to catch up with 110 people to, <laughs> man, forget it. Man. What did he but say it, to you? What did he say to you when you asked him about that? What was, what was the I, consensus? You know, he about? was like, yo, he's like, yo, son, you know, I, you know, I just, you know, I, I move how I got to move. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's just a little at a time. You know, he always had this like lift, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, so like he, you know, and, and that never stopped. You know what I mean? He mm. always had this. So he's like, yo, you know, it's, you know, I got to get the work done. Now, Crazy. mind you, while he's doing this, 
He's taking photos, right? Yeah. Of the women. He's he's t- he's putting together yeah. a magazine, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, Keith, where do you find the time for all this shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yo, is he's the- like, yo, there's a lot of hours in a day, man. If we use them wisely, you'd be surprised how much things you could get done. He's living proof of that. Yo, he's living proof. That is so inspiring to hear. Living proof of that. You know what I mean? We're talking about a guy that, you know, as I told you, he beat the reap already. Right. Mm. So it's heartbreaking for me to know that an invisible thing, because that's really what it is. That's right. right. In the air, Mm. took my brother out. You know, what I mean, I was giving him masks. I was giving him gloves. I'm like, Keith, man, please, man, just Mm. just just take the shots, man. But he just he didn't want to do it. I know he had some, you know, some, you know, some 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 things going on that were mm. conducive to that. You know, I, I believe he was a diabetic. So, you know, you're hearing all of these things out in the street. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, they're just trying to kill, you know, and it, 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 like it breaks my heart. But when four months passed and I'm texting, I'm calling, I'm emailing and I didn't get any reply, I knew it couldn't have been good because he would have never, ever did that to me on, under no circumstance. If he was coherent at all, he mm. would have sent any kind of message, yo, Blue, I'm okay. You know what mm. I mean? I didn't get that. You know, I was like, man, this this can't be good. You know, mm. I, you know, as a living, I, I work with the hospitals, specifically city hospitals. So right. I've seen this thing at its worst form. I was at Elmhurst Hospital mm. when the worst of this was happening. And man, it, you know, I, I just don't have words for it, man. Like this, this mm. guy. <laughs> You know, he gave me that type of credibility just being around him mm-hmm. that, you know, it was kind of like, yo, leave that kid alone. You know what I mean? Let, let him let him do his thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you knew like, yo, that's Dez's man. So just let him rock. You know what I mean? It's just everything you're saying right now, is just mirrors the impression I think myself and the audience watching have. And actually, we'll get back to this. I'd like to hear... I'd like to hear some more, and I'm sure they would like to hear some more stories of you and Des in those crazy predicaments, track sides, trains, rolling any amazing, amazing train graffiti stories. What you got for us, brother? Right, man, I have quite a, you know, I, I tell you, I'll tell you about one story that went bad for us, right? Okay. You know, and it, it you know, it's funny because you know, keep in mind, Des is the king of the ones and threes, right? So where he did the most damage was in the three yard, right? Now the three yard was in Esplanade Gardens. This is in Harlem. Esplanade Gardens is like a, it's, it's a building complex, right? It's, it's not quite projects, you know what I mean? It it kind of is, but it's kind of the, 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 the cream of the crop, if you will, right? This mm-hmm. is working class people, right? Mm. So underneath the building, right? Which happens to be right off of the East River Drive. Right. Is the three yard. It goes right under and it's really, it literally sits under the building. Underneath the building. Now, when I met Des, there was no way we were painting in there. It was on fire. It was, it, it just, it, it was... It was well too much too well guarded, yeah. um, and just not worth the effort of not being able to finish what it is that you're trying to produce. Yeah. So long story short, he still wanted to paint on the ones and threes, and one forty fifth was still, you know, that, mm-hmm. that was still popping. Mm-hmm. Now at this time, one forty fifth was a, a, a scary place to be. You have ball busters in there. And these guys were not to be trifled with. These dudes ran in there with pistols and would pull them out with no problem. And if you didn't have the right names in your mouth or the right hookups and plugs to go in there, yeah. it was going to go upside down for you. You know. What so I mean? they would just come in and just what? Stay they, were, the they, they pretty much, they watched the tunnel, right? Wow. So to get into the tunnel, you got to jump off mm. of the platform, yeah. right? So they had... Heads all over the place yeah, looking yeah. out. Kids inside the train. Kids outside the train station. If you even look like a graffiti artist. Now, obviously, 
<laughs> you know, we, we're hood dudes, right? Yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. carrying bags. I mean, okay, who are these guys? You know what I'm saying? Where, yeah. where, they, where they think they're going? You know what I mean? Mm. You know, so we do the slick thing, like how we do it. We run up in there. And lo and behold, we're just getting ready to do the thing. Mm. Doors open up. Ten heads pop from every which angle and direction. Mm. So we're like... I'm like, oh, shit, man, this is not looking good. And clearly they had no idea who Dez was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fortunately, I had brought up some very important names at that time. One of them happened to be, you know, uh, an FBA comrade of mine. FBA is a crew that is very closely related to the ball busters. And we were able to get out of there with our lives intact. You know what I mean? And still paint in hand. But we had to get to stepping real quick out of there. Mm. Never forget that. That was the first time in my entire life somebody has ever held me to gunpoint. You know what I mean? And it wasn't a comfortable feeling. I, I got to tell you. You know what I mean? It definitely discouraged me from wanting to continue doing this. But I just mm. wanted it so bad that instead of using it as something that was discouraging to the point where I was going to just say goodbye to my artwork and, and yeah. rap career... I just used it as a springboard and I said, all right, you know what? What don't kill me will only make me stronger. And the encouraging words from Dez is what he's like, yo, man, it could have went a whole nother way. It didn't. You know what I mean? So, you know what? We're good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know. Live to fight another day. Live to to rock another day. You know what I mean? Let's make no mistake about it. About two days later. Really? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And two days later, we went to Zariga off the stra- off the station. You know what I mean? Yeah. Literally. Dez does a, t- a top to bottom. I do a window down right next to him. He's like, yo, what are you doing? And I'm like, I said, I said, I can't reach all the way up there. He said, you know, all you got to do is stand. He's, he's like, you know what? He said, don't worry about it. It's, it's all good. You know what I mean? You know, don't worry about it. You, you, you'll figure it out eventually. You know what I mean? Like. It yeah. never discouraged me. And I mean, and I did something there that was like unheard of. Like nobody does a window down next to somebody doing the top and bottom. But yeah, that's a whole different dynamic. You know, it was probably one of my first three pieces. So I was like, hey, man, you know something? I got a piece next to Dez. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing else in the world mattered to me. You know what I mean? The next time he takes me out, I'm with Dusta. Hold on. Wait a minute, Dave. Dave. Hold on. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, that's I got no crazy. Business. No the business. next day, the next day, this was happened. this was probably no. It was it was literally the next day? Can I just can I just interject for a second? Because I, I need to put this into context. Because for a lot of people listening right now, they'd be surprised at my reaction. But let's remind ourselves, like, because there are you're you're a king in your own right, TFA, one of the people that are, you know championing this crew for so long. And- Understand something, right? And I will never take credit. Des is the president. Founder, I am not even an original crew member. I came after, right? He put me down. I'm probably the first one to get down after the original crew members. Right. But I kept pushing it. Everybody else, done. I'm probably the 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 only one. Um, I would say after I'm gonna say 84, maybe 85. I don't think anybody else ran with that except for me. See that, and that's probably where the misconception comes from. Because when I look at your your career span, I mean, to a lot of people, you know, we're talking obviously we're talking about Des and the life and times of to think that I mean, you're, we're talking about times when you were you were mentored, you were mentored essentially, right? Hundred percent, hundred percent. There's there's no doubt about it. And then I ran on my own. Because yeah. I didn't see him anymore. This is when he went that other direction. Yeah. Right. And I, I just went absolutely batshit crazy on the twos and fives. You know what I mean? I met yes, Paul. my guy. <laughs> uh, I met Wayne. Um, yep. you know, Wayne was a little kid. <laughs> I never forget. He gives me a black book that's like this big. <laughs> I'm like, I'm shorty. What are you? What are you going to do with that? <laughs> ah, like, oh, you know, you know, that, that's all I, you know, that, that I could afford. You know, I mean, you know, you My can't God. afford anything, right? That must have met Wayne. He's maybe he's 13 years old or something like that. You know, what do you expect? You know, I love your Wayne, parents, man. you know, they don't want you doing that in the first place. So his mother probably got him that just to shut him up. You know what I mean? You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Here's your book. Go away. You know? Yeah. You know what I mean? So. 
You know, um, it's crazy. Let's get back to the Duster thing because I, I, I had to oh digress for a second. Oh, my God, man. That guy is an absolute... Whew. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> if ever there was a... T- and I'm a speedster. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, I, I I love to get on it. You know what I mean? I ain't doing a buck 20. I'm not happy. But <laughs> I'm a teenage kid. Mm. And this dude is... He had like a muscle car. I can't remember exactly what it was. Camaro, Mustang, something like that. Really? Okay. Dipping in and out of L poles. I'm like, I'm going to die before I get to whatever layup <laughs> it is that we're going to. So at one point, I just closed my eyes. Like, that's how scared I was, the way he was driving. You know what I mean? Oh, good idea. So we go to 183rd Street layup. This is on the four line. And we paint there. And Des does a piece so big that Dust is like, yo... You dog the panel. I called him a panel hog. He's like, yo, I'm going to have to squeeze. I mean, it was a big Des piece. And there's three of us painting on there. So oh. Dust goes, yo, don't worry. We're going to put you in the middle. And I'm just going to do a Dust piece in the corner. I never got a picture of that train. Wow. And I know it's out there and exists. It, it, I'd be willing to give anything for that. Comments you know? below. If you got it, send it. This is my first big piece. This is probably 1984. 84. That was like, now I'm painting with two gods and I'm a nobody, unknown, zero cred, zero, zero. But do you know how like beautifully, like, oh man, I'm talking to Dero, right? And you have, you were there. You were there, bro. That's crazy. Like to think about it, that you, you were, you were, you were invited. You were. You were put for, you were chosen. There's took, I mean, Duster took to me like we were friends already, too. I'm like, mm. yo. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, you know, he, he was passing the L to me. You know, I, I never smoked. You know, so it's like, nah, yo, I, I'm not into that. You know, so he started <laughs> laughing. He passes the Dez. You know what I mean? Dez started laughing. He said, yo. And that's another thing that I, I'm very grateful of. Dez, even in his worst days, Never, ever tried to push me, coerce me, or make me do anything that was ever wrong. You know what I mean? Especially mm. when it came to, you know, that. You know what I mean? He's like, yo, you don't mess with it. That's, that's all good. That's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good for you. You know what I mean? He always he always applauded me for that. You know what I mean? He don't know yeah. how I was able to, you know, stay away from that because understand, in our time, you're not doing something. It's like you're not cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. But... Well, I guess that was just one cool I wasn't. You know what I mean? I always knew that that would hurt me in time. And mm. I didn't want to hurt myself. You know what Interesting. I'm Interesting. Yeah. But I mean, and they, there is a peer pressure to that, especially in like cultures like hip hop and graph and whatnot. You end up, you avoid it for years. And then she, she, she chases you to your gut, isn't it? You know? That's what I'm saying. You know, you know, that demon, once it grabs you, man, sometimes it never lets go. That's why in the case of, specifically of Des, you know what I mean? It it just, it was, I felt like that was a miracle from God. And mm. there's, there's no other way that I could put that because he was so deep into that. I, I mean, I, I thought he was pretty much, you know, um, you know, how should I say? I mean, that had him like he was in a straight jacket. I thought there was absolutely no way you know, I thought back then I was going to get that call. Yo, man, your man, Keith, boom, boom, boom. And I was going to be like, oh, man, no, man, please tell me it's not. And the next thing I know, he's DJ K. Slay. How about that? <laughs> I'm like, Reborn. <gasps> Crazy. Yeah. yeah, I saw him. So here's how it goes, right? You're going to love this story. Mm. I've been dying to put this one out here. You know, you'll be the only one that has this. God. I reconnected with Keith. Pretty hard, I would say. And this is, again, right before he blew up, because what happened was he went away for a short time. He got Mm -hmm. locked up. He came home and he was a security guard in Freeman Street um, and Southern Boulevard over in the in the Bronx. Right. And that literally right next to the twos and fives. Get off the train. Spot was right there. Right. So at this point, he was DJing again. He was working there and he was doing his little hustle. He was selling. Uh, um, uh, he was saying he was selling VHS videotapes, um, like Boss jeans. You know what I mean? Like big really? bags, joints. You buy the gym, thin leg is like that big. And Hustling shit. like and that, huh? This was the, right. So, so when he told me he was DJing again, I'm like, all right, yo. So you got your equipment? He's like, yeah, man. Like he's like, why? What's up? 
So I said, look, man, I want, I want to do my daughter's first birthday party. So he's like, yo, no doubt. I got you. He said, but can you pick me up? Cause I don't have a whip to bring my equipment down. He had real big speakers. Uh-huh. So I said, it really big. He said, yo, it's just a pretty big. I said, I'm not going to be able to get him in the car. He's like, nah, man, <laughs> just ain't going to fit in the car. So I said, all right, no doubt. This is what I'll do. I'll rent a U-Haul. He's like, a U-Haul? He's word? I said, yeah, I'll rent a, I'll get the van, right? So I get the van. I pick him up. Through all of this, now mind you, this is my daughter's first birthday. My daughter is 27 years old now. I'm a grandfather, by the way. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. I'm 27. Uh, my This is 27. My daughter's 27 years old. So mm. she was one, right? It's her first birthday party. So Keith says he, he's going to do it, right? So I'm asking him, Keith, how much? He don't want to tell me. Mm. Keith, how much? I go pick him up. Keith, what I owe you? I'll pay you right now. Yo, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got you. Don't worry. I got you. So now I'm getting nervous, right? Mm. So I got 300 in my pocket. Now, this is the 90s. That's that's it's not like a lot of money, but that's some money. But yeah, I'm yeah. thinking he's going to charge me 500 at least. Mm. And I'm more than willing to give it to him. But I don't have the 300, the whole five on me. So I'm thinking, all right, well, I'll give him three. And I'll tell him, yo, can you wait till Friday? I get paid. I'll give you the other two, right? And until you get that conversation, you're guessing. This is what guessing I'm thinking, I'm right? Yeah. So this is what's in my head. So finally, we get to the party. I feed him. He rocks the party. My friends are there. West was there. Psycho was there. Uh, the younger friends. These are young kids that I met later in my life um, in the Throg's Neck area. Uh, Sham, Zev, um, Sir Two, <laughs> and this young kid. Uh, that, he had a lot of talent. Why can't I remember his name right now? It's killing me. Um, uh, anyway, it'll it'll come to me. I don't want to leave him out because he's gonna be yeah, like, yeah. Oh, "You forgot me," but <laughs> it'll come to me anyway. So I meet these kids. They come to the party, mm. and one of them, this kid, sir, too, is wilding out. He's dancing like a fool. You know what I'm saying to that yeah. joint. Let me clear my throat. There it is. There it is. Hundred <laughs> percent. So yo, he has Des on the floor laughing like Des. It, it, he's laughing so hard he's got to back off the equipment because he's about to bump into records and start going start going crazy. <laughs> so, so the party's over, right? So finally, I can't take it no more. I say, Keith, I'm not taking you home. He goes, he said, word, yo, I'm going to get home. He goes, well, can you hold my equipment? You know, I'll take the train. I was like, nigga, I'm just fucking with you. I said, if you don't tell me what I got to pay you, I ain't Come taking up. your ass home. So he's like, yo, yo, no doubt, no doubt. So he goes, um, damn, you know, you fed me. You know, it's like he's reluctant to take a dollar. Right. So finally he goes. He's like. 75. All right. So I look at him and I'm like, I said, what did you say? Just like, <laughs> like I'm laughing. I'm like, did you just say something? He's like, yo, if it's too much, 50. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop, stop. I said, stop. I said, here, man, I give him the $300 and he's looking at me like I just gave him a bag of candy and he's, a, you know, a, a kid going to, the, you know, to the candy store with a nickel on him. You know what I mean? He's like, yo, nah, yo, I can't take this. You fed me. We got mad years. I'm like, Keith, man. I said, between me and you, I thought it was going to be 500 minimum. <laughs> so I was going to wind up having to owe you money. When you said $75, I almost fell out of my shoes. Yo. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? Like, nah, yo, man, you know, I don't do that to me. And, and, and I'm telling you to this day, it was like, it, you know, like he felt like I forced him almost. I had to literally force him to take the money. You know what I mean? But <laughs> this is how he was, man. You know, like even when he was selling shit, He's like, yo, you like any of this shit? Yo, take whatever you want. I'm like, Keith, I ain't got fucking 10 cents on me. How am I going to take? He's like, yo, don't worry. Pay me later. You know what I mean? Just take whatever you want. This is how he was, man. Abundance. This is how he was. Man of he abundance. He was never greedy. He was never a taker. He was always a giver. And if he wasn't given uh, uh, one way, he was given some other way. You know what I mean? Mm. Always just looking to look out. You know what I mean? You want to, people ask him to sign the black book. You know, he'd take the black book, sign the black book. Like, yo, there's a lot of other heads out there that would have took the book, hit the fucking kid in the head with it, and say, yo, shorty, keep moving that way, and just kept the book all together. You know what I mean? These mm-hmm. were the things that were going on back in them times. You know Did you mean? used to see that? Did you see certain things like that happen back in the day? Like, this sounds pretty intense. 
Brother, I seen so many people get it back then. It's not even funny. You know, I mean, there was times where the beatings were so bad that I was like, man, do I really want to continue doing this shit, man? Because, you know, it's one thing to have juice, right? Mm. It's another thing when you're one person and they're 15. You know what I mean? Mm. And I was always pretty much a solo dude. It was me and one guy, me and Mm. two guys, maybe me and three or four guys, tops. When we were painting those trains, it was usually never more than two or three people. You know what I mean? Right. Four at the most. And that just doesn't constitute a very strong crew. Now, Dez, he has street dudes going into the layups with him. Some of these dudes were holding on to, you know, to, you know, to those ratchets. You were, you was not coming in there. It didn't matter how deep you were. You weren't going in there doing shit. You know what I mean? When he was in the three yard, he had that on lockdown. You were not going in there. And if you didn't have juice with him, you might be one of those guys that got your paint taken. Really? So he was notor- had the notoriety of the street on that level? He was, yeah, not, you know, like he was a good dude, but you wasn't going to run up in his spot and mess mm-hmm. shit up for him. That was going to be a problem. And the thing about it was most of the time you didn't have to do shit. You know what I mean? He had mm-hmm. <laughs> Tank, Paul, one of the other cats <laughs> run up. And, and, and that was it. You know, said it. it, it, it Des might not even made it over there. It was, it was, it would have already been a wrap at that point. Wow. I mean, there's just the thought of it alone is just a far cry from graffiti now. Segwaying just a little bit, actually, because we should get into the straight stunting thing. How much day, brother? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, how did how did that that life transpire with you know with with uh, with Des? How did he get into the straight stunting um, okay, women's so fashion here's, side of stuff? Here's here's I'm gonna do the best <clears throat> I can here. So. I don't want to get checked on somebody by this. Like, you know mm-hmm. what that means, right? Like, yeah, yo, yeah. man, you know, you know, you don't got the story. Okay, so I'm gonna explain the story the best as I know um, from the conversations we had because I asked them the same thing. I'm like, yo, I, I, I just don't see. So to make a long story short, he was always doing parties, right? There was one specific place in the Bronx, right near 138th Street. Um, it was called the Golden Lady. This was a big strip club, a big one. Like it was, you could get a, a lot of heads in there, right? Yeah. So he would throw parties there all the time. And the people that owned the spot really liked him, right? Hmm. So, you know, of course, you know, it's one of those, you know, it's, it's a strip spot. So you got, you know, the, the women all over the place, right? So, hmm. you know, I can only assume, right? And it makes perfect sense to me, right? That yeah. Keith put two and two together, say, yo, I, I think, you know, light bulb went off in his head and he was like, yo, you know what? I think I could probably put something together here, right? Yeah. So he taught himself how to use Photoshop. <laughs> what? I just can't even, I, I, every time I think about it, I'm like, yo, this, this is That's bananas. crazy. So he taught himself how to use Photoshop. He hooked up with a couple of good photographers. Um, it's one man, Frank Antonio, I believe, uh-huh. the main one that he always messed around. Real good dude. And he hooks up with him. That was the photographer, you know, 90%, mm-hmm. maybe even 100%. And I guess he figured to himself, you know something? This would be a dope segue. I could put women on that are trying to graduate for, from the pole thing. And then now maybe they could connect to the video thing through mm. the rap cats I know. You know what I mean? Which mm. Lord knows how many times <laughs> and how many women he hooked up with that. You yeah, know what I mean? Paid and, and at yeah. the same time, the magazine is a perfect thing for people basically who are locked up. You know what I mean? That mm. is where 99.9% of that fan base came from for the, you know, for the sales of the, of the magazine and, the jail houses. And as far as I know, he was doing that until maybe just a couple of years ago. And then yeah. I think he was, you know, he had decided he was going to, I think, take it all to the video. He was, you know, kind of going back and forth with it. But at the yeah. same time, he was trying to do um, a life video about himself. And obviously, you know, he didn't yeah. get to finish that. You know what I mean? He he had even told me a blue man, you know, I'm gonna need you to do some footage for me. <laughs> you know, my answer to that, you know what yeah. I mean? I was like, yo, absolutely. Every day or twice on the weekend, you just let me know when and we'll make it happen. You and you're like, you want you want like $75, dude? 
<laughs> no, I should have told him that. Yo, how much yeah, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> For real, for real. <laughs> he would have said, yo, what do you want? You know what I mean? <laughs> yo, we just had such a different relationship, man. Me and Keith Something were special. Just, you know, and it was a beautiful thing, man, because he knew I never wanted anything from him. And when I did, he gave it to me, man. You know what I mean? Like, he had him and Henry and... I don't know who mm. actually printed these things, but I believe Eric Firestone may have had something to do with it. They right. did this metal photo that's about that long. Yeah. It's about that tall. And it's a train that he had painted that said crime in the city. Oh, yeah. He signed it and Henry signed it. Before we get off this podcast, I'm going to go in my closet, go grab that and show it to you. <laughs> That'll show you right there what the I mean. Lineage, real I don't, shit. I don't have to talk about my credibility with him. Anybody who is somebody that knows the they graffiti know. connection knows. I mean, to this day, uh, TFA man, push that. that. That's that's never, <laughs> you know that that's that's for life. You never know what I mean? question. So, I mean, he had a documentary that he was going to make. He was he had he had just started working on some. You know, I don't know whether he was going to do video. A book. I know all of these things were in the works. You know, what I mean, he was, you know, he was working. He had started doing some T-shirts. Actually, I got some of those upstairs, too. One of them just mm-hmm. says King. And then another one is 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 the, it's like a Dez crime in the city. And it's got him painting on it. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. you know, he he you know, he was doing a lot of small things to segue into that. Right. So, like, you know mm-hmm. how we want to do something, you know, we start making something yeah. percolate. Right. Incremental and stages see it starting to take off and then boom. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You hit him with the, you know, with the footage of a video or a book, and they're like, "Oh shit, okay, this is why he was starting mm. to push the graffiti shit again." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Few and far between. Do you find? Um, I mean, that there's a handful, but let's be honest. When it comes to the integration of different street culture disciplines, like DJing, like multimedia, like graffiti, a lot of a lot. This was the prototype that a lot of people followed suit with. That, that you know you don't get you don't get that legacy anymore. I, I don't think it really just can't happen. It's just a whole different world. But but the fact that he was able to flourish as, from both sides as a DJ and, and graffiti artist, yeah, you know, I just I love that. And it's, it always hurts my heart to know that someone with that versatility goes, and and it just means that it may not happen again. You know what I mean? You know, you got to remember something about him is that he was always trying to think outside the box. He was always trying to be one step ahead of it. And he always knew that with any recording career, right, whether it be hip hop, R&B, rock and roll, country, I don't care what it is. Right. You're not that dude forever. Right. Everybody can't be Jay-Z. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. You can't have that kind of longevity forever to where you you're always going to be that top. You know what I mean? And he always knew that. You know what I mean? So he always said to himself, you know something? When things were hot and hitting, he was always trying to formulate another plan to move into the next thing that was going to keep him going. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Because he knew how that was. He knew that eventually, you know, okay, so, you know, I I can't get the big budgets and, and, you know, keep, you know, doing, uh, uh, you know, big, um, you know, Mm-hmm. Big album stuff with you know all of the big labels. Okay, cool. So you know what? I'll I hit them underground. I'll, I'll I'll go right back to where I came from. Keep doing that, and from that, I'll just try to keep mm-hmm. rolling the dollar. You know what I mean? You know yeah. I'll segue into this. I'll do mm-hmm. that. This this will support that. That supports this. It's one of the reasons he stayed on the radio, man. I mean, mm-hmm. not that he not that he didn't love it. Obviously, he you know he did right, or he wouldn't have stayed that long. Mm-hmm. But you know. It, that's a free advertising format. Think about it. Right? That's true. You true. always, you're always, they're always hearing you. They're always seeing you. And you know how this is out yeah. of sight, out of mind. Right. Yeah. That's you know, 100%. It, there's no killer killer. Now the next guy comes around. Right. Cause you're not doing it no more. And they're like, all right, I'm going to take what he did and try to make it better or flip it this way or yeah. that way. Right. So, yeah. and he always knew that. So he, you know, he stayed current on the pulse. You said something earlier, actually, that was interesting. Sorry to cut so quick, but dude, like you were right in saying that to a lot of hip hop heads, 
and I'm, I'm not sure where this came from, but they didn't realize that he was Dez. As Kay said, they nah, didn't man, realize you, that. If you look, you know, it's it's a funny thing, right? So now I'm probably paying closer attention since I lost two close friends to social media than I ever have. Mm. I've had an Instagram from the beginning, but I don't push it. I don't know how many years Instagram's been around now. Probably close to 10, right? Mm, yeah. And yeah. to this day, I still don't think I have a thousand posts, right? But mm. yet I got... I don't know, 22, 23,000 followers. Mm. I don't know 23,000 people. Do you? I mean, I, I, <laughs> let's think about it, right? So it, and remember, okay. it's not how many people follow you. It's how many people are looking, right? Because you mm. go into the search part and all those people that are in there are people that are somehow, you know, either directly uh, related or people that are looking at other people that are looking at you. Right. Mm. Or those people looking at those other people that you're not looking at. Right. So they they all show up there. Right. So you could have, you know, five, ten thousand followers, but maybe five or ten million can be seeing you. Right. So that's right. It's crazy. And it only takes one in one key situation. And then all of a sudden, boom, boom, you know, like you, you. you don't have enough time to do nothing but look at your phone all day. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, I'm a working man, family man, four children, three grandchildren. I don't have time to be on social media all day. I damn, sometimes I don't have time to draw as much as I would like to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You know, I love the culture. I'm never going to stop. But, um, you know, getting back to that, it wasn't until recent that I started really paying attention to the Instagram, specifically when, you know, when K passed. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at all the hip hop heads and they're like, yo, we had no idea how big he was in the graffiti culture and Mm -hmm. this and that. And I'm like, wow, like who would have thought, you know, but he just wasn't one to talk about things, man. Keith just not. I could have a conversation with him. Right. And if somebody Mm -hmm. real close to him is right there on the scene, he might talk about a few things and that's it. Right. Wow. That's just how he was. You know what I mean? He didn't put your shit out there because he was private with himself. So he mm. would never do anything to you that he wouldn't want you to do to him. Yeah, that is so sick. That is so amazing. Rent one of the written man. <laughs> you know, I just I, I, I don't have we don't have enough time for me to talk about how large he was. Uh, you know, in the neighborhood, everybody knew him. Everywhere he went, every mm-hmm. everybody. Was, I mean, it just was always, just was always love. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you know, he he, you know, he just wasn't, you know, he just wasn't a foul dude, man. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, he was a guy that embraced the culture. He was always trying to push the cu- the culture forward. There was a lot of guys that weren't hot uh, when he was doing his thing, and he still was like, "Yo, man, let me try to pull you up." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, come come drop a joint. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, like, who does that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Cat, yeah. Current cats, they're not going to do that because they're like, yo, you're not hot. You're going to mm-hmm. drag my shit backwards and nobody's going to buy my shit, right? It's a, level, it's a level of confidence there. That's a confidence thing, isn't it? Knowing right? yourself. But it wasn't, it, it just wasn't about that to him, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you know it. Look at the shit. I mean, he had Melly Mel on there, Grandmaster Cat. Like, come mm-hmm. on, man. These are, these are 70 cats. Like, that, that's just bananas. You know yeah, yeah. I mean? yeah that is insane. Yeah. yeah, and you're right. You're right. It's just... And then even now when I think about that, all those songs that he's done and how he's put people on and yeah, it, it trans there's there's weight to 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 his um there's this, there's a real stature there that is deeper than on face value. These these heads must have known about theirs, the history. They must have just, and it, it, it bled it. You could see in the person. I mean, I, my my personal. I mean, he needs a do, he he needs a real documentary. Like I For hope, real. I hope this hits somewhere real bit. I hope you pl- when you play this, somebody yeah, I, Henry get involved in Netflix, Hulu, <laughs> whoever. Somebody like he really like. There's just so much more than what people know to For him real. that. I mean, it's not even funny. I mean, he had so many different looks, so Mm. many different lives, so many different parts and elements and pieces to him. It's an endless puzzle. Crazy. Well, brother, thank you so much for being a part of the journey. Uh, And the, the, yeah, just the the history of. And shit, thank you. 
I should be thanking him. You know what I mean? We should be just thanking him. You know what I mean? For He's real. the one that made this all. Without him, me and you ain't talking right now. For <laughs> I mean, real, it's, it's just that real. simple. Yeah, exactly. Um, I need to see that piece, brother. <laughs> Stay tuned. Let's, yeah, we're stay take there, commercial stay break. I'll be right back. There you go. There you go. I'll do the jingle. <laughs> yeah, totally. Ready, brother? Oh ready my goodness. for the, yeah. the rollout? Ready, like a like straight out the oh, station, bro, ready. Bro. This thing is bananas. Look, I, I didn't even, as you can see, I didn't even open it all up. You see how you can see part of it right there? Yo, so this is fresh opening. This is, yep, this is, I have, I have, I have yet to crack the whole thing. As oh you my. can see right here in the corner. Yo, not today. And Henry Chalfont. Insane. That is crazy. Right? crazy. I'm going to crack it open. You ready? Oh, my God. There, oh man. You're going to have, uh, you're going to get gold right now. If you are not watching this and you're listening jump onto this youtube check the number on the on the audio jump straight onto this and check this out official openings of what is the unboxing <laughs> bro it's, seriously it's such a significant su- it's, it's in every I don't know person it should be in every person's childhood memories there's very few how many do you reckon there are of them oh. I, don't, I don't i don't think there's not signed, obviously, like. Probably a handful. Get that. Yeah, here we go. Coming out, brother. Look, even the back of this thing. This is on. Oh God. This is on a real piece of metal. For real, for real. Oh, my God. Look at God. the back of this, how well this is made. That is. Wow, that is beautiful. That Crazy, is so right? well rendered. Yeah, that looks so, tough. Yeah, here we go, brother. Coming out. Crime in the city, man. Desi Des, I believe he did this in either 81 or 82. All you see is crime in the city. Correct. Correct. I think it was either 81 or 82. How beautiful is that? Up a tiny bit more, just get a full. Is it heavy? It must be quite heavy, huh? Yo, that is in. Say, and it's signed in the bottom right hand corner yeah. there. It's right the same there, stretch there, as a train. Found, brother, right here in the corner. D man, that is fucking incredible. I am just, I feel Dude. blessed. I know the people watching are just going to be like, Yo, this is out. happening. Yeah, man. <sighs> Look brother. how beautiful it shines and shit. Like, it's so yeah. well done. Piece of metal. I'm getting ready to hang it right over my little art studio that I got right there. And, you know, mm. off the side of my kitchen. I have a pretty big kitchen. So this thing is. To me, this is priceless. You know, Price, what I'm 100%. there ain't enough money in the world for somebody to get this off of me. Never ever. Th- it's priceless. It's a priceless item. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? You know, he signed it like, you know, just a beautiful piece, man. You know what yeah. I mean? Something that's going to stand the test of time. You know what I mean? Super for well. <laughs> yeah, man. Crazy. I mean, I'm just like, there's moments on the podcast where I'm just, I do often pinch myself, but this is one of those moments where it's like, of all, of all episodes, it's just... From the graffiti side, um, there really isn't anybody uh, that was as close to him as I was. Mm. You know, there were, there were other people that, you know, he's, you know, he stayed talking to regularly. Uh, Part would be one of those for sure. For sure. Um, uh, I believe he was still in touch with Cade and Teen. Nice. Um, loosely. Uh, and basically that was about it, man. Jason. I um, mm. think that was about it, man. You know what I mean? You know, he, he, you know, the graffiti world and the hip hop world. The, the funny thing about it is. Um. Like this stuff we're doing right now in hip hop, this would cost you a fortune, mm. right? Because everything is about a dollar and pushing a dollar forward, right? Mm-hmm. So if somebody is doing something or they plug someone into some something mm-hmm. and uh, and they wind up doing some music together or something like that, then there's going to be checks for all of that. Right? For sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we fight over here. 
you know, you know, and bicker and, you know, this guy is better than that guy and the hell with this guy. And, and, and it's all for nothing. So there's no money involved. Like, yeah. I don't even understand why we do it. If we put as much effort into all of that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. All that effort that we put into all of the, you know, the um, foolery, right? Mm-hmm. As we say, if we put all that effort into figuring out a way to turn this into money, yeah. Boy, we'd have a lot of graffiti millionaires. You know what I mean? But yeah. it just doesn't happen. It's just too much egotistical nonsense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Unnecessary. Yeah, for sad, sure. but I mean, it is what it is, man. You know, I guess there's a little bit of that with everything. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it's just sad that it's a little bit too deep in our culture. And this is why, you know, you know, people specifically like him didn't, you know, didn't try to chase maybe an art career. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you think about it. You know what I mean? Like that—that that certainly would have been the wrong road for him. Yeah, uh, he couldn't have possibly done as good as he did with hip hop with that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe, but there isn't the residual to it that there is yeah. to music. You know what I mean? So takes a particular type of person. Takes, definitely went the right direction. <laughs> yeah, and I might add, long live Desi Des K Slay. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent, brother. He'll live in me as long as I'm still around. You know, long as Wayne is still around, I'm pretty sure that he'll he'll make sure we stay up and you know, yeah, on and on and uh, you know, so forth. You know what I mean? At least <laughs> that's that's what we would hope, right? But that's I, right. I'm pretty sure that's the way it'll be. You know what I mean? Dear old man, thank you so much for being a part of this. And uh, thank, thank K-Slay, you, K-Slay. man. This is all for him. You know, I hope this goes out there. I hope, you know, you're able to cut it up and edit it. I hope the lighting, everything is good. So good. We're going real, man. 100%. If it isn't, brother, we can do it all over again. You just let me know. My guy. Love the, uh, I love the lingo, too, man. I got to come, come on. Ah, I'm gonna sign this off. You guys got the best, man. I like it. <laughs> Stay on the line, man. We'll talk a little bit more. Listen, Killer Cat of Podcast, out like you was out of fashion. You know what to do. Sharing is caring. So tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Hey, eh? um, big shout out to everyone that follows us and keeps in touch, all right? Um, and remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. You stay safe. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Peace. 